Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Vicent and it has been about 18 months since I bought my 2020 Tesla Model 3 Performance. And let's just say the honeymoon is officially over. So what do I think now? Do I still love it? Would I buy it again? Where do we go from here? Why don't we take a drive and discuss some of those points? I I think the rains have finally stopped and I need out of this house. Alright guys, so let's start off by talking about the acceleration. The thing that electric cars are somewhat known for. Uh, every person I give a ride to in this car still has that oh my goodness feel when you accelerate. It's still described like a subway or a roller coaster. It is still phenomenal. It, even for me who experiences it day in and day out, that zero to 60 rush, that stoplight to stoplight, stop sign to get going feeling of this car is fantastic. It is not something that you get used to, if you will. The next thing that uh, is often talked about when you're talking about a Tesla is its technology. Now, certain aspects of the technology, in my opinion, have actually been caught up to. Tesla self-driving, as an example, used to lead the industry. I'm not sure any other car manufacturer uh, was even in competition with them when it first came out. But now, most brands and manufacturers have implemented some sort of self-driving technology, and I'm not 100% sure Tesla is the leader in that like they once were. Now, technology is still a big feature on this car, and I can tell you, it is still fantastic. It still feels, whether they are leading or in second place, it still feels extremely futuristic when your car is driving itself. The touchscreen also is absolutely fantastic. No matter what you do on this, it is instantaneously responsive. The graphics that show the street lights and the lines on the road, it, it, it feels like you're driving a car from tomorrow and not one from today. Now certain aspects of it are fairly gimmicky. I'm not really sold on the arcade or the fart noises. They are hilarious the first time you do them, but then what? You just, nobody wants to throw their blinker on every single day and hear a fart noise. That's the last thing you want and yet it's what uh, most Tesla owners want to showcase every single time. Technology though, still fantastic and this car is one of the best, if not the best on market. One of my favorite parts of owning a Tesla is its total cost of ownership. Now, Tesla typically is a luxury brand, or at least it's in cost with luxury brands. You know, nobody considering a Hyundai is also considering a Tesla. However, when you do the math, you may want to stretch and go for a Tesla, or shall I say, you may be able to stretch and go for a Tesla. The main reason for that is you cannot, you cannot discount the amount of money you save on gas. If you have the means of charging at home versus filling up at a gas station, you are going to save money. If you're like me and you have a solar roof at home, and you are essentially creating more electricity than you use, then you're filling up your car for free. And when you take that out of the equation, your total cost of ownership is substantially less than that of a fuel car. Also, another thing that is not talked about largely in the Tesla community is that Tesla offers its own insurance. And my experience says that they are substantially cheaper than other brands. So this Tesla that I purchased for 60,000 plus was cheaper to insure day in and day out than a Honda Civic that cost me $23,000. When you take into account the cost saved from fuel, this car becomes a whole heck of a lot cheaper to own 
and a whole lot easier to stomach when you have to pay $60,000 for a car that is missing some amenities that you would traditionally find at this price point. So you have that electric Tesla acceleration that is second to none and is still amazing. It is a, a car that continues to gain efficiencies with over-the-air updates and its technology package is unbelievable. It is a car that in the end doesn't cost that much. It has an unbelievably low total cost of ownership. So you're asking yourself now at home, it can't all be good, can it? And unfortunately, no. No, it can't. So I'm going to start off by talking about the charging in, in this not so good category. I have experienced both sides of this coin. As I said, I have solar at home. I can charge in my garage overnight and it's fantastic. However, I experienced an outage on my solar a couple of months back where I didn't have solar on my house for about a month. I had to rely strictly on the supercharger network. Now, sure, I could have plugged in at home uh, and just paid the bill, but I had some supercharger credits from Tesla, so I figured why not uh, use those and continue on the free realm than pay for electricity at home. I want to baseline a few things, however, before we dive into the supercharger network and charging this vehicle. And that is a little dirty secret that Tesla owners don't want anyone to know. And Tesla doesn't want anyone to know because this narrative is not talked about. The only thing that's talked about is the amount of range that Tesla says. This car gets 310 miles to the charge. Okay, that is its projected range. And every person under the sun, even Tesla owners will tell you, that is the range if you drive extremely conservatively. Now here's that little dirty secret that I told you nobody likes to talk about. Tesla recommends that you only charge your battery between 80 and 90 percent for daily usage to preserve battery life. Well if I'm only charging my car to 90 percent, I'm effectively getting 280 miles to the charge. If I charge my battery to 80 percent, then I'm only getting 250 miles to the charge. Okay, so I can hear you already, but Danny, nobody drives more than 250 miles in a day and everybody's daily usage is way under that, so you're making a big deal out of nothing. Okay, point taken. However, unless you live next to a supercharger, which I don't, add on another 10 miles to get to the supercharger and another 10 miles to get home. So effectively now I've got 230. And now if you take into consideration the average commute of 25 miles to work, that means you are going to the supercharger every two to three days to charge. Imagine coming home from work and having to stop at a supercharger two to three times a week. And those superchargers, sure, they are fast and everybody talks about how fast they are. But guys, they're still 45 minutes. So imagine sitting at a supercharger for 30 to 45 minutes, two to three times a week. If you can't charge at home and have to rely on a supercharger, unless you have a supercharger extremely close to your home, the convenience of this car, the appeal of this car starts to lose its luster. I've experienced both. For me, Charging at home makes this a fantastic car. If I had to rely on the supercharger network, I'm not sure I'd be saying the same thing. Next thing I want to talk about, guys, is the steering. And I have uh, referenced in multiple videos how the steering on this car feels a little video gamey. And I've had a couple of friends ask me what that means. And so I want to explain. If you've ever played a video game, then you know there's a bit of a delay in what your hands do and what your character or whatever on the video game does. It's not an instantaneous reaction. You feel a little disconnected from what's happening on television. In fact, I know a lot of gamers, they do all kinds of things and spend all kinds of money to reduce that lag time from when they input to what happens on screen. Well, welcome to the land of Tesla. See, now this car doesn't give you any road feedback. 
plain and simple, the steering in this car stinks. If you put this car in its comfort mode, which I understand there's comfort, standard, and then there's sport, and standard is where you probably are gonna spend most of your time. But let's say you put it into comfort mode. It is a light, beautiful steer that you, is not beautiful. I take that back. It's just extremely light. You don't feel anything. There's no feeling when you're driving. It doesn't give you any feedback from the road. You don't get anything telling you where the car is planted. You're, you're just kind of sort of putting it there and hoping for the best. If you put it in standard, it gets a little bit better, but still artificial. You don't really feel where the tires are on the road. You're positioning it based upon experience from driving, but not the feedback you're receiving from the car. And when you put the car into sport, that artificial feeling becomes ever more present. See, Tesla adds resistance to the steering to mimic road feel. See, a, a good steering car, you're feeling the road as you're turning the wheel and the tires are touching the ground and it's adding a bit of resistance. Now, with this, there's no communication from the road to your hands. And so what they do is they make the, the steering heavy. And it's actually almost more heavy than it needs to be. It's simply heavy to give you that idea of a sports car feel. It's, it's, it's like eating low-fat cheese. It's not really cheese. And no matter how much you try to convince yourself, it still sucks. The last piece I want to bring up is something that is near and dear to my heart when you talk about cars. Now, I'm not gonna get all cliche on you and talk about the soul or the spirit of a car. Tons of people do that, and the reality is I too believe that certain cars invoke a feeling when you drive them that makes it feel like the car has a soul and has a personality you're interacting with. This car doesn't have that, and I think this feature is part of it. See, what this car does is get you from A to B, and I've always maintained don't buy a car just to get you from A to B. Cars are the second most expensive thing we're gonna buy in our lives. And we all want the nicest, most luxurious, most beautiful home out there, and yet so many people buy boring cars because, well, it's a utilitarian tool, it just needs to get me from A to B. Well, that's because you bought a car that only gets you from A to B and it doesn't speak to you in any way. And that's what this car is. I love this car for all that it gives and at the same time, I'm not drawn to drive it again. I had that feeling when I first bought this car, but it quickly evaporated. This car, I hate to say it, is a one-trick pony. It is very fast off the line. And that's it. It doesn't speak to you. There is no soul or life to this car. Electric is our future, but I want more from my car than one trick. I love this car. And if you're in the market for an electric car, I highly recommend it. So there you have it guys, my 18 month review on the Tesla Model 3 Performance. Uh, the truth is it is an amazing car. There is no denying that, and if you're in the market for an electric, I highly recommend the Model 3 Performance. Anyway guys, I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button, and if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe down below and hit the little bell icon so you're notified the next time I upload a video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.